In this video, I will take a look at the coffee roasting sound waveform captured during a previous roasting demonstration video. You can find the link to this video in the description below. To capture the raw sound, I used the USB microphone Umic 1 from Mini DSP mounted on a small tripod near the coffee chamber. For more details about this microphone, follow the link in the description below. You do not need an expensive microphone like this one. Any microphone should do fine. To record the raw sound, I use the free program Audacity. You can download this program from the link shown here and in the description, and then follow instructions to install and use. This is also the program I used for the analysis in this video. The sound I will analyze in this video was captured during the demonstration roast that followed the roast profile shown here. For more details about this demonstration roast, please follow the link in the description. I exported the roast sound waveform captured by Audacity as a WAV file, and here I opened the file in Audacity for the analysis. You can also export the waveform as an AP3 file if you desire to save space. First, a few words about the Audacity interface. The top horizontal scale is time in seconds since the sound recording started. The vertical scale is amplitude normalized to plus minus one, and the indicators at the bottom provide additional timing information that we're going to be using later. If we now look at the waveform, here is when the run button was pressed on the SR540 and the fan started running. You can see the sound suddenly increasing in amplitude and then gradually decreasing as the fan setting is lowered. A good level for the background fine noise is an amplitude of plus minus 0.25. To accomplish this level, please adjust the microphone input level accordingly. The spikes that can be seen later in time are the first and second cracks. Here you can see the start of the first crack. And here you can see the start of the second crack. In this demonstration, the rows continue past the end of the second crack. Here is when cooldown started and the fan setting was increased to speed up the cooldown. Here is when the cooldown stopped and the fan shut down. Here I dropped something and the microphone picked up the noise, so please ignore these spikes. So now we're going to take a look at the sound of the first crack and compare that to the sound of the second crack. So we pick a portion of the first crack, for example here, and then we start the playback in Audacity. Okay, now we can pick a portion in the middle of the second crack, let's say here, and we start the playback. Okay, so hopefully you could uh, hear the difference. In the first crack, the sound is more like a, a popcorn uh, type of sound. And in the second crack, it's more like uh, milk added to Rice Krispies or uh, crushing paper. Okay, so we're now here at the waveform. And what we're going to do is to apply some noise reduction techniques to see if we can isolate the spikes a little bit better from the background. Uh, to do that, uh, first we're going to create a duplicate uh, track so we can apply the note reduction on the on the duplicate track. Okay, so we need to select the whole thing. Edit duplicate. Okay. So then on the duplicate track, we select a portion of the background noise and we go to effect, noise reduction, get noise profile. Then we select the entire track and we go effect, noise reduction, and using the default uh, parameters for the second step of the noise reduction, we apply it to the entire waveform. So here we go. It's applying the noise reduction. And once it's done, 
we can apply it again. Repeat noise reduction. Okay, much better. So uh, what we see, if we compare this track to the original track, we, we can see that the spikes have been preserved, but the noise uh, has been, for the most part, uh, eliminated. You can also see that buried in the noise, we also had some high frequency spikes, which are probably cracks of uh, lower amplitude. So this way now, we have the spikes uh, very well isolated uh, from the background. Now uh, we're going to synchronize the timing of the duplicate track with the timing of the Artisan uh, roasting software. Uh, to do that, we need to look at when the fan started here, which corresponds to the charge event in the Artisan program, and set that equal to time zero. So here we can see that it's about one minute. Uh, so that's, uh, that's fairly easy to do. So what we, what we do is select this portion to, um, to zoom in. And so we can see that here more or less is when the fan started. So we can select everything uh, prior to that. And we just uh, hit delete. Okay, now we go back to the full view. And now we can see that the duplicate in the duplicate track, everything has been shifted to the left and time equals zero here corresponds to the time equals zero in the artisan software. So this way, for example, when we see, uh, when we can, we click on a, on a um, crack, say uh, this first crack, uh, here is the time corresponding to that eight minutes and seven seconds. And so this should correspond uh, fairly well with the timing in the artisan program. So now uh, we're going to get rid of this original uh, track and expand this uh, processed track. So here is the group associated with the first crack event and over here is the group associated with the second uh, crack event. We can see that second crack, there is a, a lot more uh, cracks, uh, much closer to each other. In comparison, the first crack events, uh, the cracks are more more sparse. Uh, there are fewer of them, and it you know in this particular rows, the first crack went on for quite some time. Uh, typically, uh, first crack is is a little bit shorter in the SR five forty, maybe. Uh, uh, you know, less than two minutes in general. In this case, it went from the eight minute mark almost to the uh, 12 minute mark. So it's almost four minutes, which is quite a bit. So if we can uh, get, we can get from here, the uh, timing for the beginning of first crack and the end of first crack and the same for the second crack. To do that, we just position the cursor on the first crack here and we click and we can read the time associated with that uh, event in the indicator below. And this corresponds to eight minutes and seven seconds. Then we position the cursor on the last crack of the first crack event, more or less, you know, here, and 11 minutes and 42 seconds. Uh, then we do the same for the second crack. This is the first one. At 12 minutes and 56 seconds, and this is the last one uh, at 15 minutes and 5 seconds. And here is when we start the cooldown, so the cooldown begins at 16 minutes and 5 seconds. So that's how you can determine the timing of the different events using the sound waveform. One of the difficulties associated with, uh, with this um, sound analysis is to determine exactly when the first crack starts end and the second crack starts and ends. Um, you can see some of that difficulty here. So we, even though we said, okay, so this is the end of the first crack, 
you can see that there may be more cracks going on here. So why didn't we pick this one? What about that one? We also said, okay, this is the beginning of the second crack. So maybe second crack started here or here or here. Why not? So let's zoom in here a little bit more and see what happens. Yeah, so this, this is when we said, okay, the first crack ended here. And then we said the second crack started here. And so what's going on in between? There are some spikes. The amplitude of those spikes is, is not as large, but, but there are clearly some high frequency spikes there. So, so there could be some, some cracks going on, maybe some few, few cracks, few first cracks kind of lingering here. Maybe the second crack started uh, a little bit earlier, but it didn't really get going until we have this you know, first significant you know, second crack event. So this is why we picked this one as the start of the second crack. Um, in, in terms of the end of the first crack, okay, so this is a little bit, a, a spike a little bit above the background noise. So we said, okay, there may be a few more going on after that, but this, this is the last significant one. So that's the one we picked for the end of the first crack. So it is a little bit of a subjective uh, process, but hopefully with these tools, you can, uh, you know, determining the beginning and end of these events with uh, more precision than you could when you're just listening um, during the roast. Okay, so once we get the timing of the first crack events and the second crack events from the waveform analysis, we can go back to Artisan and make corrections on the profile of the roast. So, during the roast, remember, we can push the buttons to uh, indicate the start of the first crack, the end of the first crack, and the same thing for the second crack. However, sometimes uh, just by listening during the roast is, is not very easy to determine, especially when, for example, the first crack ends. So, so it's very helpful to be able to go back after the fact with the information obtained from the waveform analysis and then make the corrections. So I already made uh, some corrections earlier. So the values that you see here for the events are very close to the ones we read. But, you know, nevertheless, I'm going to show you the process uh, so you can see how it can get updated. You go here to Roast Properties and then uh, go to the Events tab. And in this area here, you can enter the timing for different events. So for the first crack start, we had here 8.10, we read 8.07. So let's just change 8.10 to 8.07. Uh, the first crack end is, was at 8.42. Second crack start is at 12.56. And end 15.05. And then the uh, drop or the start of the cooldown at 16.05. So once you made these corrections, you click OK. And everything will be automatically adjusted here with the new times. So now you can have a record here in the Artisan profile that is more accurate in terms of when the first crack event and the second crack events uh, are happening. Also, Artisan shows the beam thermocouple temperature associated with the time of the event. For example, the start of the first crack at 8.07 corresponds to a temperature of 391 degrees Fahrenheit. I am also going to show a second example of applying this process to different beans roasted to full CT plus just a few seconds after the second crack starts. The green beans are from Sweet Maria's, GCX 6675 Mexico Organic Chiapas Sierra Mariscal. These are good for espresso, so we roasted them just past the second crack. Here is the artisan roasting profile. The timing of the events was already corrected from the sound analysis I will be showing later. 
Here is a picture of the roasted beans. Full City Plus, a medium dark roast, is a popular roast for espresso. Here is the raw sound waveform captured during the roast. In this example, the microphone I used to capture the sound was an old analog computer microphone. This shows you that there is no need to have an expensive USB microphone. Here is the waveform process following the method I showed earlier. You can see the time of the events that were then transferred to the Artisan program as explained before. So you might be wondering what is the point of following this process after the roast was done. I can see two possible benefits. One is that you can have a more accurate timing of important events on the roast you did, so you can be more confident of the roast level you achieved. For example, a city roast would be just after the end of the first crack, or just over 432 degrees Fahrenheit in this case. The second benefit is that if you plan to do more roast batches using the same beans and a similar profile, you can use this information to better plan your roast. For example, if I want to stop at full city just before the second crack starts, then I know now that for these beans, I should plan to start the cooldown at around 445 degrees Fahrenheit in my setup. This assumes, of course, that the timing of the events will be repeatable for the same beans and a similar profile, which I found to be generally the case so far within a few degrees. I plan to roast a variety of green beans so I will have better statistics in the future that I can post if there is interest. In the following section, we're going to look at the detailed structure of the first and the second spikes. This section is not very practical and it could get a little technical, so if you are not curious or interested in this topic, you can stop the video here. Now we're going to compare the uh, detail of the first crack and then uh, we're going to show the detail of a second crack. So we're just going to pick a first crack, maybe a full amplitude first crack, perhaps here. And so we're going to expand that. And here you can see that this is a full amplitude uh, first crack. So we can keep zooming in on that one. So we can progressively see more and more detail. And uh, perhaps we can we can stop here. And you can see that the this first crack has a very sharp rise and very high frequency oscillations. In fact, we could do a spectrum analysis and if we can select a portion here before the first crack, we can see that the, um, the spectrum is dominated uh, by low frequencies. So here you have uh, about uh, one, one kilohertz is the peak. And then uh, very few components uh, in the high frequency. Now we could plot the same for the spike area here. And the situation is different. We need to select a little bit more data. OK. So now you can see that we have a very high frequency components. The, the peak here is at uh, about 7 kilohertz. So um, it's uh, very fast decaying also. If you look at the, the time of the selection here, you can see the time of the selection in milliseconds shown in this area. 6 milliseconds. So in 6 milliseconds or so, the entire spike uh, has decayed and is back to more or less the background, the background noise. Before leaving the first spike, we are going to uh, select this entire area and we're going to copy that. And we're going to create a new track, a new mono track. And at the very beginning of that track, we're going to paste 
this waveform. You can't see it, but it's here. There it is. So back to the mm, waveform. We're going to analyze a second crack, a full amplitude a second crack. We can uh, see if we can find in this area, for example, a full amplitude second crack. Um, and here is one, for example. We can zoom in, do the same thing we did for the first crack. And we are in a similar situation where we see a very fast rising uh, sound waveform, very high frequency. Again, we can do the spectrum before we expect something similar. And here it is with peaks around 800, you know, 1500 hertz and very little in the high frequencies. And then for the crack itself, we, uh, we see Uh, high frequency components, peaks in the 8 kilohertz, 7 kilohertz area. Fast decaying, here is about 7 milliseconds or so. So um, we're going to again copy this portion of the waveform and uh, paste it here next to the first crack detail. Let me keep zooming in. So we'll paste it right here. Okay. Now we can compare these two. And we can see that they look fairly similar. So this is the detail of a first crack, full amplitude first crack. And this is the detail of a full amplitude second crack. Even though they look similar, they sound different. If you remember, this was more like a popcorn uh, type of sound. And this is more like uh, paper crushing or Rice Krispies, you know, uh, milk added to Rice Krispies. So the um, sound signature is, is different, but in both cases, uh, it's a very fast uh, rising spike with very f high frequency components, decaying very quickly within six or seven milliseconds, is back to the, to the background. I hope this video was useful to understand how to use sound analysis in the roasting process. Thank you very much for watching.